All righty. <laughs> All right, everybody. One more hour, and then uh, we can uh, we can have a little bit early break. So, what are we doing? Urinary system. Now, your urinary system is composed of your kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. So it's this picture. So just like the brain, you have uh, the the kidneys is a star, and um, the physicians who are the expert at kidneys are the nephrologists. Now. A whole bunch of physicians can deal with your ureters, which you've got a pair of them here and here, and your urinary bladder and your urethra. Just do know and understand that if you have a UTI or a urinary tract infection, urinary tract infection most common is E. coli. E. coli has these little grippers and they like to climb. So just like upper respiratory, lower respiratory, do you think a UTI, if it's chronic, can make it way to its kidney and then yes, become yes. kidney disease? Yes. And then now we're messing with the star, which is our kidney. So in the urinary system, the kidney is the star, and then all of this other stuff is tubing. You have the tubing from your both kidneys, your left and your right, uh, coming down to your urinary bladder, which is a uh, uh, transitional epithelia and smooth muscle. And it can be as small as a golf ball or as, can hold anywhere uh, up to two liters. Your ureters as well also has some musculature in it and your urethra also has some musculature in it, which we're gonna talk about momentarily. But these are the main stars uh, of your urinary system. So what is the main function of your kidneys? The main function of your kidneys is to filter blood and form urine. And we're going to talk about the composition of urine. Now, anything that your body wants to throw out or anything that's extra, that's considered waste. And the main waste that we already talked about is what? Urea or nitrogenous waste. Because I need the carbon, I need the hydrogen, I need the oxygen. But <clears throat> the extra nitrogens from protein, I want to throw away. And of course, ureters transfer urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder is your temporary storage of urine. And remember, when you got to go, you got to go. Do not hold it because in theory, urine is sterile. But if you leave urine in a warm, dark place for an extended period of time, especially it's got sugar and salt in it, don't you think things are going to grow in there? Yes. And last but not least, your urethra is the tube that connects your urinary bladder to the toilet. Now, your kidney is very important because it decides what to keep and what to throw out. And we already learned that from ADH, which is our antidiuretic hormone. So ADH helps control water because if I need the water, ADH is gonna get increased and it's gonna tell my body, it's specifically my kidneys, like, hey, don't pee. So that's one way we can control things. Another way we can control things, we're gonna talk about how now the lungs can throw out uh, H pluses. Well, guess who can throw out H pluses and OH minuses? Kidney. Your kidney. And I just mentioned it not even a couple of minutes ago is we mess with this ability and we mess with this chem chemically. And that's the reason why I give you the battery acid, which is in the hospital, you know, and, and the ill tasting food, because I sometimes want to mess with your pH because messing, the P messing with your pH with your urinary system, sometimes I like to keep certain drugs in you. And there's other times I want to get rid of that drug fat, right? And that's pH. Uh, metabolic waste, of course, we're throwing it on the nitrogen, right? But just know and understand anything extra in your body is going to get thrown out. So let's say, for example, ate a chock full of Doritos. So that's what? Salt and fat. Do you think if I have an excess amount of salt and fat in my blood, don't you think it's going to end up in the toilet? Yes. Yes, it's going to end up in your urine. How about this? Um, if I uh, ate a whole bunch of proteins, remember those bros in the gym who got their little water jug filled with heaven's own what? 
because they're doing a, you know, the dry powder challenge. Let me suck up all the creatinine, bro. What's going to end up in the toilet? If it's excess, all that protein that they all ate. Oh, by the way, remember, it's a filter. What's easier to filter? Water or water with rocks in it? Water, of course. So if I keep on having solutes, such as artificial powders and sweeteners and um, creatinine and, and all that other stuff, what do you think it's going to do to my kidneys? Again, water with rocks in it. It's going to pound my kidneys, and it's not good. And of course, hormones. We're going to talk about the RAA system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, because those are hormones that tell my uh, kidney what to do and also tells my adrenal cortex what to do and it messes with my blood pressure. And that's really important because uh, you don't know blood pressure, you don't know, um, you don't know medicine. So let's start with the star. Our kidneys, they're located retroperitoneally. Remember the peritoneum, the mm -hmm. thing that protects our abdomen? Well, whoever built us, built us crazy smart. They knew that um, the renal system is really important. So uh, what did the aliens do? They put it where? Behind the peritoneum. So that if anything happens to the peritoneum, will it affect your kidneys? Nope, that's the neat part of it is. And also, what did we also learn about the uh, our ribs? Don't we have two floating ribs, 11 and 12? And they're what, in the back to protect my kidneys? All right? So well, your kidneys are like, right. All they're in the back, there? they're way in the back, up here. I didn't know they were that high. And yeah, they're pretty high, they're right here. Um, now, the left kidney is higher than the right one because remember who's this huge metabolic organ right here on our right side? That's our, uh, our, our liver. So the liver is going to push down what? It's going to push down uh, your... Um, 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 you're, it's going to push your right kidney a little bit out of the, uh, uh, a little bit, out, uh, a little bit lower. So, left kidney is a little higher. The right kidney is lower because of your liver. And of course, another uh, layers question. What is your, um, uh, what is your kidney surrounded by? Is it surrounded by a renal capsule? And again, back to, I wish we. Uh, uh, played around with uh, cow kidneys, they're fun. And you'll see that they're surrounded by fat, just like the heart and a whole bunch of connective tissue. So what covers my kidney? Renal capsule. What's it made out of? Fat and connective tissue. What's the connective tissue called? Fascia and of course, adipose renal fat. Now, we could go all through all this, but the best way to look at kidney is just by looking at this picture. All right. This is where I got to slow down. Now, does everyone see there's like a whole bunch of arteries and veins here on the outside? Everyone see that? And then there's like this, these brown funnels and then these yellow funnels. So you got to look at it like the blood side and the urine side. So the blood side, all these arteries and veins, that's your renal cortex. That's the blood side. The urine side is called your uh, renal medulla or your medullary area. That's this brown and yellow stuff. And it makes sense because what are we doing in our kidney? We want to filter out the blood. I want to take out anything that's extra, water, sugar, protein, urea, waste, and I want to make urine. So if I'm doing all the filtration up here in the renal cortex, the urine has to go then what? Funnel down and then eventually get to this ureter. So this is how it goes, right? Um, dirty blood goes through here your renal artery, then it goes up through here, and then once it goes up here, it then will all filter out, and then it creates urine. Urine will go into this big triangular thing, and you gotta kinda look at it like, um, 
like in a 3D kind of way. Doesn't it look like a candy corn, this thing? Yeah. I know I'm thinking about Halloween a little early, but what does a candy corn look like? Oh. Doesn't it look like a cone? Doesn't it look like a funnel? Well, that's the first funnel. And of course, it's called your renal pyramid. The next funnel, you see this little U thing here? Right here? Yeah. That is your minor calyx. That's another funnel. So it goes from your um, pyramid to a minor calyx. Now do you see like it's like kind of like widens up and opens up here? Then that's got to be if I got a minor calyx, I got to have a major calyx. And do you see there's like one big, big uh, yellow funnel mm -hmm. from here to here? And that's your renal pelvis. So when you look at a pelvic, the pelvis, doesn't it look like a funnel? But like for baby? Mm -hmm. But now the renal pelvis is a funnel for urine. So I got to ask you, what's the pathway of urine when it comes out of your renal cortex? Well, in the area of the renal medulla, it goes through three things, or well, four things. One, your pyramids. Two, minor calyx. Three, major calyx. Four, your renal pelvis, and then it ends up in your ureter, and then down to your urinary bladder, and so on and so forth. Can we please repeat that one more time, but slower? So it goes from your medulla, renal medulla. So what, what, what's the first thing it has to do? Blood's got to go in. Yeah. And it goes in through the renal artery. That's this red thing. Then it goes through all these red and blue things. We're going to talk more about that. But that's your renal cortex. Think what? Filtration. It's going to filter anything that I got to filter and it's going to make urine. Now, your renal medulla is this brown stuff and this yellow stuff. Now, think of all the brown stuff and yellow stuff as funnels. So the first funnel is your pyramid. That's this thing right here, candy corn. Mm -hmm. The next funnel is your minor calyx. It's this little U shaped bump here. Then it empties out into like this little room or a vestibule, and that's your major calyx. And then all the major calyces get together and end up in this big room here, your renal pelvis. And then into your ureter, which is the tube that connects your kidney to your urinary bladder. Wait, the first funnel is? Candy corn, pyramids, second funnel. Little guy, minor calyx. Next funnel, big brother, major calyx. And then, put it all funnel down into, just like baby, renal pelvis. And then ends up in my ureter. This is called the pathway. And this is called your renal medulla. That's the inner part, or that's the funnel part, or the urine part of your kidney. So the renal cortex, that's the blood part. And the funnel part or the urine part is your renal medulla. So it is all this. Didn't you call it a pathway of something? Yeah, yeah, it's a pathway of urine. Remember? Because you got the blood side, and then you have where urine's going to go. I'm confused on what the uh, pyramids are. Is there a name for them? Yeah, it's called pyramid. Think of what a pyramid is. It's like this, right? What happens if I turn it upside down? It turns into a funnel. And that's all your kidney is. It's a funnel. So it's like to do what to take all the urine and then funnel it down and then into my ureter so it can goes into my urinary bladder. It's not the hilum. Now, what's your hilum? Hilum. You know what the kidney, the kidney bean shape where it gets indented? The hilum is this indentation right here. And the hilum on your lung is the indentation of the lung where all your pulmonary artery, vein, and bronchial is going. So anything that's a hilum is what? It's a thing where, like an indentation where things go in and where things go out. And what goes in and out of this kidney? You have three major uh, structures. You have your renal artery, renal vein, and your ureter. So that's three things that go in the hilum. And doesn't that make any sense? Don't you think in my renal artery, the dirty blood has to go in? Renal vein, dirty blood has to go out. And urine also has to go out. So that's my what? My ureter. And you see it as what? Red, 
blue, and of course, brownish yellow. Now for lab, this would be an easy question. I just put this picture A, B, C, D, E, identify. But for, why would we do this? Did this look hard? It's what, seven items? Seven, is that a lot? No, because especially if every morning I do it for 15 seconds, 20 seconds right before I get in my car, how about this? Every time I leave this place, I do it 20 seconds. What will you have by the end of the day? You'll have it. Now, if you can't memorize seven stuff, I don't know. Question. So I understand that you want to know the locations for the lab, but for the actual like by you know lecture class, do you want us to know the functions? No, you them? tell me. Yeah. How will you make a question? Um, like, um, uh, which one would be like the hollow chamber? Is that what you're asking? Like, no. Going down. What's your? What do you mean? Do you you're, you make questions, right? For uh, yeah. for the Kahoot. Yes. So how does do, how does the Dr. Nelson question look like? If that was paper. The name of it and then or like the function of it and then which one is that? Yeah, function? but how? Like give me an example. And then I'll give you my example. So let me let me piggyback a little on her what she's talking about. So for example, you given us a structure of the kidney. Tell me the structure you have probably A, B, C matching. Yeah, but it won't be a picture. How can I make it words? Pyramid, boom, a. Oh, but that's a picture. That's a picture. All right, let me help you. Which one is? Let me help you. How's this? Didn't we talk about three structures in the hilum? Right? So I can ask you, what are the three structures in the hilum? Is it renal artery, renal vein, ureter, all, none? Of course, it's what? All. I could ask you, what structures are in, you, you have to be able to distinguish renal cortex and renal medulla, right? So, I could ask, where's all the urine? Is it in the renal cortex or in the renal medulla? It's all in what? The medulla, which is all the middle stuff. Where's all the blood? Renal cortex. Where does the filtration happen? Renal cortex, because I'm filtering what? Blood, dirty blood. Does it go in the renal artery or renal vein? Who comes in first from our story? What's the first thing we pointed at? Renal artery. So dirty blood goes in the renal artery. What comes out in the renal vein? Clean blood, right? Because who filtered all the blood? The renal cortex. I could ask you, what's the first funnel that urine goes into? After um, uh, uh, it goes into where? What's the big brown thing? No. Oh. What's the big brown thing? Yeah. Pyramid. Then what's next in the story? Minor calyx. Then what's next in the story? Major calyx. And then we all funnel down into what? One big yeah. pelvis. And then where's the pelvis enter? E exit all the urine into our ureter. So could I ask a, a question? Uh, what is the major funnel that uh, exits into my ureter? And you'll tell me what? We know pelvis. What's the first? Uh, what's the um, what's the first funnel that uh, funnels out urine from my renal cortex? And you'll tell me pyramids. So those three funnels are the renal medulla. Yeah, all four. You have your renal pyramid, minor calyx, major calyx, and your renal pelvis. They're all funnels, they all have urine, and they're all in the medulla. How's that question for all of the above? And that's exactly how your kidney works. You have a blood side, and you have a urine side. So the blood side, think filter. The urine side, think what? A whole bunch of funnels that's going to funnel my way down into what tube comes out? Ureter. And that's how I could ask a question regarding this without showing a picture. Right? And you guys, are, when you really think about it, that's how I've done it before. You guys were originally on track when you said I would give the part and then give what it does. Could I also give what it does and then the part? And then, but I won't do that to you. I'll just ask you, like, what does renal cortex do? Oh, it filters. What's it made out of? A whole bunch of arteries and veins. What's the uh, renal medulla do? Oh, it's going to funnel all the, the urine where? Into my ureter. OK, what's the first one? Pyramid. What's the last one? Um, pelvis. Boom, I'm done. Clean blood goes in what? Renal? Artery. Vein. Oh, I pointed out the wrong one. Renal vein. 
dirty blood comes in renal artery. And you can see here, you have a renal cortex and a renal medulla. Now, let's talk about the nephron, which is this bad boy right here. Now, is there a picture of the nephron? No. So I'm going to have to show you a picture of the nephron. Now, what is a nephron? Nephron is, are these microscopic... structure of it like does it give it the, uh, the stand you know how like I put these stands on something well your kidney it gets held into place because we already know that it has fascia right, right. Yeah. and we already learned from fascia and tendons and stuff like that that that's what holds up all the stuff in your body so let's say for example I did a kidney transplant I got to cut all that stuff out if I cut all that stuff out what happens to the kidney it's gonna fall oh. Right, so um, uh, that that fascia, that renal capsule, that's the thing that's holding your kidneys where it is, and that's why we have to. There are some surgeries that we let the kidney just fall, but there are other surgeries that we we perform renal pexy, where we would kind of sew it in back there somehow. I don't know. I'm not um, like let it fall and keep it there, or let it fall and you fix yeah, it. Yeah, there are other surgeries that they they just let it fall and then whatever it falls. Really? That's where it is. And you don't. I, I've seen both. I've seen them do pexy. I've seen them not. Is this um, a dumb question if I say, like, you can't feel that? No, you won't feel nothing. And also, uh, what do you uh, what do you call that? Um, why doesn't it not let me? OK, I'll just, I guess. I don't understand why it won't let me look at pictures, but. Do it this way. So this whole thing is microscopic. And there's like tens of 40,000 of them in each kidney or something like that. Now, remember we mentioned that the renal cortex, right? The outer rim is made out of a whole bunch of arteries and veins. Well, it's also made up of a whole bunch of tubing. And the one thing you'll see here, dirty blood comes in here. Right. And then when it goes into here, into the capillaries, it's like this big dust bunny of capillaries. They're all like matted down. And then you have this thing here. It's called your glomerulus. And it's spelled right here. Let me make it do it. So that's your glomerulus. And this is your Bowman's capsule. Now, what do you need to know? You need to know that it goes in the cortex. There's all these microscopic things, and that's what this is. And they're, they're called your nephron. And the main thing that that thing does is filter out the blood and then throws out anything we don't want, but keeps anything we want. So let's say, for example, I ate way too much sugar. So that would be considered waste, right? So a nephron is going to throw out what? Sugar. Let's say I ate way too much salt. So what's my uh, nephron going to do? Salt is con now considered what? A waste product. It's too much. The body only takes what it needs. So it'll throw that out. And that's the function of all this. And the, um, the only thing you need to know is what? Please. Nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. There are tens of thousands of them in each kidney. And they're microscopic. And the main part which is right here in this thing called your glomerulus, that's where the filtration of the dirty blood happens. And what do I mean by dirty? It has what? Extra nitrogens, hence nitrogenous waste in the form of ammonia, NH4, right? It also could have extra salt, extra sugar, and whatnot. And they're microscopic. And you can see, look at it, makes sense. Doesn't this look like our intestines? Look familiar, right? Yeah. So what does our intestines do? Doesn't it absorb things we need? And then what does our large intestine do? Doesn't it throw out stuff we don't need? So let's say I drank a whole ton of water, right? What's it going to do? That's considered waste. So what's my nephron going to do? It's going to throw out what? Water. Now, remember the high versus low pressures and all that? 
and we talked about tonicity and oncotic pressure, you know, like how much salt, how much uh, salt is in one thing or another. Well, in future training, you're going to talk about how all those pressures come into play in this thing so that it, because right now it's like a, just know and understand that if you have too much of something, your kidney will sense it and the nephron will throw it out. If you need something, your kidney will sense it and your nephron will do what? Keep it. So let's say I'm hypoglycemic, right? And my kidney wants to throw out some sugar. Do you think my kid, do you think the nephron will let it? No, nephron will what? Keep it. Now, do you think I could play with this, the chemistry of this? Yeah. Do you think I have drugs to tell uh, my nephron to go throw things out and, or to keep things? Yeah. And um, one classic medication that we already know is diuretics or um, water pill. If you take a diuretic, what does it make you do? Pee. So I trick this thing into, tell, into uh, making it do what? Throw out water when it doesn't want to. Question. So nephron, you would say it's the... It's the functional unit of the kidney and they're all located in the cortex. And since it's the functional unit of the kidney, its main function is filtration. It'll do what? Filter out all the bad things, throw out all the bad things, and just keep anything that we need. And what am I, not only bad things, but anything extra. Because in the human body, anything extra is considered waste. So if you drink too much water, your body doesn't like it. It's wasteful. You drink too much, you eat too much salt, your body doesn't like it. It throws it out. So what kind of question can I ask? What is the nephron? And you'll tell me, functional unit of kidney. I'll ask you, what is the main function of the functional unit of uh, the kidney? And you'll tell me, filtration. Then I'll ask you, where is this microscopic thing that I have 30 to 40,000 of? And you'll tell me it is in the cortex of my kidney. Doesn't that look a nice, nice set of questions? Now, let's go back to slideshow. And I'm moving fast. Question. So what causes a kidney stone? Remember, you tell me. What do I need to make a stone? I need sugar. what? Salt, say it, sugar, fat. and fat. Anywhere that there's salt, sugar, and fat, I mix it up. You can make a stone, right? And let's say, for example, this particular patient, remember I told you when you got to go, you got to go. This particular patient likes holding her urine. And she's what? Greater than 40 years of age, 40 and female. Guess what? Right? We're going to start forming stones. Now, let's review what we just saw, but in a gross anatomical way. If you see there, this is your abdominal aorta. It's all coming from my uh, my aorta uh, and from my left ventricle. So of course, that blood just got oxygenated. So it's got oxygen, we're good. How do I know it's got oxygen? This thing's red, wonderful. But here's the problem. Doesn't it have like extra water in it? Might have some extra salt, some sugars and whatnot. Yep, so it's gonna go here and it's gonna go in your hilum. And in who, what's in your hilum? You've got your renal artery, renal vein, and your ureter. And you can see the indentation here. So it goes into the renal artery, it's dirty. Then it goes into your cortex. And we already know the cortex is full of those microscopic nephrons that's gonna filter my blood and make me some urine. So after the filtration process, it's gonna go right in here into your pyramid, minor calyx, major calyx, renal pelvis, this thing here, right? Ignore the blue and then enter my ureter. And of course, what, what thing is this? Who's up here? Adrenal gland. Your adrenal gland, right? Question. You said the hilum is the renal vein, renal artery, and... What's this? Your ureter. Oh, the so those ureter. are the three things. And think of it, it's gotta be what? Dirty blood going in, clean blood going out, mm -hmm. urine going out. Okay. So if my patient, let's say for example, what's my last Oh, so there's two exits basically. Yeah. Well, one what happened to my patient? She had, um, he was riding his motorcycle and, you know, when he was riding pretty fast and he toppled over end over end. And what happens? 
your kidneys are like um, can get torn out of uh, the of um, the renal fascia, and that's exactly what happened to our patient. So my patient had acute renal failure. So what are the three things that got ripped? Renal artery, renal vein, and the uh, uh, ureter. Now, what are the two things that we now found in uh, in his retroperitoneal space? Blood, Blood and, urine. and urine. The two things that shouldn't be leaking out of anything. So he goes, he was pretty much in a lot of trouble. But the cool thing about acute renal failure is I could put this all back. We could, not me, but the surgery will put this all back and sew them all up, reperfuse all this, and he's good to go, right? But what happens if it's chronic renal failure, like diabetic nephropathy, right? If I have diabetic nephropathy, that's what? Damage over what? Years, maybe decades. So what's going to happen to all these structures? Is it easy to sew up or give some meds and to put back into place? Nope. So anything chronic, know that what? The damage is kind of semi-permanent. That's why by the time I see my patient and they have these things, this, uh, honestly, there's not much I could do. But so what's better? What's better to do is what? Prevention. Let the patient not get the diabetes in the first place. And you can now see, can you now see what, if my patient was hypertensive, what it would do to uh, my kidney? Don't you think it's going to give my kidney a hard time if all those pressures started getting backed up? And this is my abdominal aorta. That's the, the bulk of all the systemic pressure is going to be right there. So is it any wonder that your kidneys are the first to get hit if you have hypertension? And don't you think it's any wonder it's one of the first things that I start looking at? And that's why I always, when I do bloods, I do my physical examination, of course, right? What do I always do? I want a urinalysis. I want to see what's going on. Question. Yep. Shoot. So, um, with minerals and vitamins like um, salt, palmetto, and just stuff like that, will help with urine. Salt palmetto has been known only with minor uh, help. A um, uh, research study came out uh, at the um, Mayo Clinic. Salt palmetto and similar items kind of help. Uh, it's better to just do normal traditional management um, because before, back in the day, people swore by it. Okay. But even like cranberry, like when you deal with juice. now, we still do cranberry juice, okay. right? And um, citric juices because why? If I acidify my urine, right, it messes with the chemical reaction that makes stones. Okay. And also, we also also know that, um, well, maybe you guys so know it it. increases, um, stones? no, decreases uh, uh, because if I acidify my urine, it doesn't stick, okay. the stones don't stick too well. And also, another thing about cranberry juice is it's not only acidic, it's a it's a diuretic. So it'll make you what? Makes yeah. you pee, okay. right? So if I acidify my urine and I pee a lot, right? How's how's my patient going to, uh, how's my patient going to develop stone? It's going to be harder, especially if they have a history of it. But I can tell you right now, if you know the formula for stone, what do you have to do? I got to get my blood pressure down. I got to get my salt down and I got to get my sugar down. I get these three things down. Will I have will I have stones? No, because who has stones, right? Okay. It's the three Fs: fat, forty, and female, right? Damn. So really? if you're obese, right, you're forty, you're greater age of forty, especially if you had kids, right? Because kids, they're going to do a number on your renal system. You know, you guys know that, right? Because yeah. once once you well, it doesn't the whole entire body, but uh, how how's the how's the um, how many of our obstetric patients have uh, have acute to chronic UTIs? Almost all of them, right? Why do you think I'm? Why do you think I I keep on taking your urine? I know you're pregnant, but I keep on taking your urine because why? Almost always because baby's pushing down on this. Uh, um, how's your urinary bladder? It's gonna be what? Kind of stuck. Now kidneys. We already know what it does. We already know filtration. We know uh, waste especially nitrogenous waste. But remember, anything that's extra is considered waste. So another thing that it does is secrete erythropoietin, which we kind of know. And of course, that's red, cell, uh, 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 red blood cell production. Now, it also secretes renin, and I'm going to show you a, a better chart, which helps uh, uh, deal with blood pressure. So think renin, blood pressure. It also deals with vitamin D. 
And um, you can now see from just those alone, just filtration alone, you could see that the kidneys have a lot of functions. So if I lose my kidney, especially to something as preventable as diabetes, don't you think that's a shame? Because now it's going to mess with what? It's not only going to mess with your blood pressure, it's going to mess with your blood. It's going to mess with your, all your waste and your electrolytes and metabolism. And now it's also going to mess with your vitamin D. So that's why kidney is the star of the urinary system. Because once it's broken, I can't, I can't fix it, uh, especially if it's a chronic issue. Now, if they're not functioning, we perform two, times, uh, two types of dialysis. We could do hemodialysis and uh, peritoneal. Now, what's the difference between the, the two? For people who have one kidney, does that mean they have like less of something? Yep, they have less ability to do all of the stuff that we talked about. Oh, really? Yep, because remember those those functions. They're, 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 whoever you believe created us gave us two. If you have less, oh, that's not good. But you can like donate and get kidney transplants, though, correct? Yeah, you can. But um, uh, did I tell you guys about one of my Zumba dancers? No. Six years he waited, and yet, and guess what happened? Grass versus host, uh, host rejection. So now he's got to wait how many more years? He waited six years, and then he got it. And then what happened in this last year? He got sick, graft versus host, and then what happened to his donated kidney? Yeah. Bam. But to him, he's young and he's healthy. It's just luck of the draw that um, uh, that, that that he had renal failure. Such a shame. But hey, but. Since he's a dancer, since his job is being healthy, how do you think he survived all this? He survived it quite well, actually. So Question. What if you have like more than two kidneys? My grandma has three. Yeah, there's some people walking around this earth. Um, they have, but usually the third or fourth one, I've even seen quads. Um, uh, the third or fourth one is usually vestigial. It doesn't really work. And your two main ones usually take the brunt of it. Yeah, that, that, that's an oddity. I, I, I've only seen that once in a textbook. Question. No, I was just saying, I was just kidding. Why not just remove it and stuff and just leave it in there? Do I want to do surgery when I don't need it? <laughs> right? right? Remember, remember my views on surgery, right? On anything. Does the benefit outweigh the risk? And that's why that doctors, nurses, and medical professionals can't make decisions like just right off the bat. You can't just do stuff. I have to weigh the, I have to weigh the consequences. And a lot of times I got to peer into a crystal ball, which I, I don't know even the whole story. So that's why it's, this job is, it's tricky. So let's say I, let's say my kidneys are messed up. There's two ways that I can get rid of. Uh, the nitrogenous waste in my body. Now, the first way is hemodialysis, if we look at here. Now, remember all those functions of kidney? The Fresnius machine only does one function, filtration. That's it. We put men and women on Mars or Moon or whatever, but we can't figure out to make a machine that does what we do as human beings. Kidney's this big. When we, and has like what, five or six functions, and we only can simulate one, right? We got electric cars, we got like, you know, we have all these things, but it also goes to show you that um, the human body is a pretty, it's pretty complicated. So what do we do? So this is, um, we put something called a fistula, right? So there's like a port, and it could be in your neck, it could be in your arm, and if you've ever seen dialysis, it's about the size of a garden hose, right? And of course, it connects arterial blood to the machine and venous blood to the machine. And what does the machine do? And it's called the Fresnius machine. It will do what? Filter all the blood and then do what? Put it back in you. But how long does it take? A long time. It's long, it's three, four, five, depending on the blood pressure of my patient. The, the status of the good kidney. So, and also, how, how many times a week do I gotta do this? Every At week. least three, 
All right? So just imagine for the rest of your life. So that's why I made the conscious decision. Let me try to eat better, be better, because do I want to get hooked up to this machine for the rest of my life? And also, my father, because he retired early, and he retired relatively wealthy. What do you think happened to all his money? He died penniless. Because why? He goes, all this dialysis, all these medications, all these doctors. At one point, he had 15 physicians watching him. He had to go to, he had to, go to doctor's visits and facilities on a regular basis for the last 10 years of his life. And hemodialysis is one of those things. Oh, by the way, my dad was tough as nails. Old school jungle guy, right? Vietnam vet, three tours, including the Tet Offensive, right? Survived all of that. Never saw my father cry. You know when I saw him cry? First day is dialysis. He suffered dearly. And does the machine warm the blood up? No. Nope. Does the machine give you vitamin D? No. Nope. Does the machine accidentally strip a whole bunch of glucose from your sugar? I mean, from your blood, so that when the blood goes back into my patient, my patient will now become what? Cold, in pain, confused, and hypoglycemic. You think that's a good combination to be every three days of the rest of your life? No, and he suffered, and like I told you. Did I tell you a story about my dad? When he got bit by like a junkyard, a couple of junkyard dogs. He was walking, he was walking me to school one day. A bunch of junkyard dogs um, bit him in the stomach and the side of his thigh. Took a chunk out of him. Me and him went to the emergency room. He took all the shots, because back in the day, there was like a set of like 19 shots. He took them all in the abdomen. And this is what he said to the nurse. Do them all today, I gotta go to work, and I gotta get this kid to school. He stood there like this and just took it off. And then the stitches too, just took it. And then pulled up his trousers, went to work. Now, if that didn't hurt him, but that machine did, that's a nice message to you and your future patients. Fix the stuff. You don't want to be on this. And my time, my six months in the Kidney Institute, I saw unbelievable suffering and unbelievable levels of boredom and pain. And you don't want any of that. So what's better? Take care of yourself now. Take care of your kidneys is the number one preventable thing. Take care of your hypertension because if your hypertension gets out of hand, what's it going to do to these kidneys? It's going to ruin them. Right? Question. So the peritoneal is shorter than the... Now, peritoneal? let's look at... Now, that's hemodialysis. So hemo means blood. Right? Now, we know that our kidneys are right behind our peritoneum. But if my kidneys aren't working so well, who's going to have all the garbage? All uh, my... Uh, yeah, blood. and But the blood specifically, where? In your intestines, right? So this is what we do, and this also is partially horrific. First, I have to do put a surgical port in your abdomen. So there's going to be a spigot, like a faucet, in your abdomen, which I plug this thing into, and it has something called dialysis. Now, the dialysis is this clear, lightly colored yellow fluid. And the thing about this dialysis is it loves what? nitrogens, waste, and other garbage. So this is what I do. I put the patient on the side, right, in lateral recumbent. Then I put the bag full of dialysis. Well, one bag. By the way, I can go anywhere from 9 to 15 bottles of this bag. I put it up, right, and then it does what? It drains into my patient's abdomen, and then their abdomen gets nice and what? This swollen and distended. Then, and I'm not making this up, I gotta then turn my patient from side to side to slosh them around so that the dialysis can then suck up all the stuff, all the nastiness of your peritoneum. Then after that, after I slosh them around, guess what? Then I put them on the side again. Then I take this dialysis solution, I take it off the T-bar, and then I put it on the floor. And then I monitor. If I see blood or anything horrific, <coughs> Call the nephrologist, we got trouble. Or call GI, GI, we got trouble. By the way, both of these rooms are isolated, number one. Both of these rooms have to be sterile. So I got to be what? Gloved up, bootied up. I got my mask on. Um, I got my 
um, not only scrubs, I got the, um, what do you call it, the disposable, you know, you yeah. put the you're down, right? So I am like PPE to the, you know, to the eyeballs. And you can only imagine now with COVID because in both situations, am I now doing what? A prolonged period of time where I'm sticking something into you? Don't you think both of these people are going to have infections up to their eyeballs? And the answer, of course, is yes. And actually, 30% of them get infections. So that's the reason why infectious med is in that room. Yep. So if I'm in there, right, I see the first bottle. We're, talk we're still talking about peritoneal dialysis. The first bottle is really cloudy. So do I have to do another bottle? Yeah. Yep. Wash, rinse, and repeat that whole thing, which around, it takes like anywhere from 12 to 20 minutes in this cycle. I got to repeat this one. Remember I told you I can go up to like 15 bottles. Right? Oh, I once had the, uh, one guy go up to like 15, 16 bottles. You know why it was all cloudy? He was sneaking in hot dogs in his backpack while I was doing dialysis. <laughs> I thought I was crazy. I'm like, do I smell mustard? And I go, mm, maybe it's just my thinking. Maybe I'm just crazy. Then fifth bottle, cloudy. Sixth bottle, cloudy. Seventh bottle. Meanwhile, nephrology nursing is looking at me like, what the hell taking so long? You got two others you got to go do. And then I'm going... Look at the bottles. And then, of course, nurse shop is attacked. Sir, can you get up, please? Can you please let go of the bag? You can't search my bag. And she did what? Emptied out the bag, and it was all what? It was all Brett's. His son snuck him in there while I wasn't looking. Right? Now, do you think now I have to start all over? Yeah. Yup. Am I going home anytime soon? No. Nope. And do I have to now chart that? Yep. Nope. And then, don't you think I'm going to get hit for it? Yep. So that's why I remember Hot Dog Man. And then every time after that, I'm like, sir. And he goes, I need to see your bag. And he goes, I don't have any. And guess what? Yeah. Always like a hoagie or a hot dog, some sort of long sandwich thing. And uh, that guy pissed me off eight ways. Why, Question. Would, why would he do that knowing it ex extends the process? If you're there eight hours, don't you don't care. Your patient don't care. Your patient don't. Oh, how's this? I had an eight-year-old boy on dialysis. Uh, remove all my stops so that the blood could go through. And then what happened? He got edema, and his left arm looked like what? Like 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 the Hulk. And he was like, my bad. And I'm looking at him like, I could just let that go and kill you. I could just do that. But you're helping yourself. And then did I get hit for that too? Yeah. yeah. Right, because he put a blanket over it. So I was thinking, oh, it's going around. Oh, the dialysis is going through. The president's machine must be on. Um, you know, on, on high today. Oh, this is wonderful. So I go to my critical, you know, I'm doing, I come back and then I see him like, what? <coughs> There's like a demon. Then I look, this is all engorged. Stupid. But that's your patient, right? Do they know? Yeah, probably. But did they care? Probably not. How, Question. How are you shaking them? Is this like a physical thing? Like oh yeah, no, you got to slosh them around. You got to like from right lateral recumbent to left. And then, eh, and then you, I do a little, Little, I call it truffle shuffle. I just do this a little bit. And then I go like that. And then you hear it. It's like, and then uh, two or three times is really good. Four or five is really cloudy. And then you put the, um, then you, oh, once the dialysis is finished, you put it on the ground and then it empties out. And it should, by like the fifth or sixth bottle, it should like start to clear up. And then once it's like super clear, then you could do what? You could stop. Okay. Now imagine that times six because there's, five other people who have also peritoneal uh, dialysis that I have to do as well. So it's like a room about this big and they're sitting there and they're all, uh, they're all watching like little, little TVs or whatnot. But man, uh, uh, when you look at, um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, hemodialysis, it's a very depressing room. And, and also, I don't know, I, I don't want to, I don't wish that upon my worst enemy. Um, that's just a lot of pain and a lot of trouble. And remember, every three days. And if something goes wrong, let's say, let's say it's like Christmas weekend or something, and they 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 went off diet. Guess what I have to do? Now I got to double up their dialysis. Now, uh, real blood supply. Uh, we already talked about the glomerulus, right? And we already know what apparent efferent means. Apparent means what? Up. It's going in. Efferent, think what? Exiting out. So if I talk about afferent arteries, 
that's what all the dirty blood going into the uh, cortex, efferent, it's all coming out. So what should be clean? <clears throat> efferent, exiting. Because if I'm exiting my kidneys, it should be what? Clean. Um, uh, we already went through that. That's nice. Nephron, here's a closer look. Ooh. Um, this is not this real color. Uh, and again, um, um, a um, micrograph, they usually color it for effect, so it looks really cool. But you can see here that this is your glomerulus and this is your capillaries. And you see, just like the intestines, you see how it's like all bunched up? And it makes sense because if it's all bunched up, there's more surface area that I can filter at one time. <coughs> and you could see it has these little fenestrations here. And it even you gotta when you're look, using your imagination, doesn't even look like a um like an oil filter of your car. Yeah. Yeah. So whoever made us uh made the ultimate oil filter, which is our kidneys. And they did it microscopically, which is pretty genius. <laughs> Um, it's 1129, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I got five minutes. So, cortex, uh, so we need to know types of nephron. What do we need to know about the nephron? <laughs> nephron is where in the cortex, and it does what? It filters stuff. Now, since it filters stuff, right, it's got to know everything about my blood pressure, and it's got to have all the chemoreceptors there. That's already assumed. So there's this thing called your JG apparatus or your juxta glomerular apparatus. Now juxta means what? Just like epi, right? When you juxtapose something, it's what? Right on top of it. So your JG cells or your juxta glomerular apparatus goes, it not only secretes renin, it also knows how much salt you're intaking, right? And again, just hold on to renin, aldosterone, and angiotensin. Just hold on to that in the back of your head because there's a chart that I can show you. But if I ask you what the JG apparatus does, you'll tell me it's a chemoreceptor. <clears throat> and it's located right on top of where my nephron filters things. So if the glomerulus is the filter for my nephron, so the JG apparatus is just right there. And doesn't that make sense? If I'm filtering something, should I know how much I'm filtering? how much water is going through, how much salt is going through, and how much blood is going through. Don't have to know what macular denza and juxtaglomerular cells, but just know what the JG apparatus or JG cells, juxtaglomerular cells, think two things. Enzyme, renin, renin, and of course, blood pressure, and we already know who controls blood pressure. Salt, sodium chloride, because wherever salt goes, water goes. So if I retain my salt, Right? What's going to happen to my blood pressure? Is it going to increase or decrease if I keep salt? Increase. I keep salt, increase. But if I throw salt out, what's going to happen? Right? It's going to decrease my blood pressure. And isn't that what a diuretic really does? Your diuretic tricks your kidneys to throw out salt. And if it starts throwing out salt, what will happen to the water? It'll follow it. Right? From the stuff that we learned about diffusion and osmosis. And then I pee a lot. What happens to my blood pressure? There's that. And who controls all that? Who oversees that that chemical process? That is your JG cell. JG. And it's go and and it's located right on top of your um your glomerulus, which is this filter right here. See, look, it's right here. So if this is the filter, this is your JG. So two things: salt and uh, renin. We're going to mention those things. Now, you know what? Let's call it because I don't want to get into uh, renin and aldosterone and, and hormonal control of kidneys uh, until later. So let's have like, uh, since we're really cooking on time, uh, come back uh, 1245.
Give you an okay. extra 15 minutes. Thank you. And uh, for those of uh, uh, anybody owe me a quiz or anything, come see me. Stop this.